Not sure whether that's going to have an effect on the audio, but he seems to be doing circles. Even though this road is incredibly quiet, the road behind this camera is very loud and a lot of people are looking to see what is going on with this car because this has caused quite a stir over the last two weeks. I've had a lot of people stopping me in petrol stations. I've had people with the previous M240i asking all sorts of questions about what is this like to drive because it's very difficult to get your hands on. And on Auto Trader, they are trading over list, over £50,000. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supercars of London and the 2021 BMW M240i. When this car launched, I shared it amongst all of my petrol head friends on WhatsApp, as I'm sure most of you did, and said this is hands down the ugliest car that BMW have ever designed. Since then, they've actually gone and beaten it. This isn't the ugliest BMW anymore. And I actually think since the 8 Series, the clean, sleek 8 Series, BMW have had more misses than hits when it comes to exterior design. But here, over a thousand miles over the last two weeks that I've been driving this car, it is safe to say you should not judge a book by its cover. Now, up until this point, I have not watched a YouTube video on what this car like or what anyone else says about it. This is, hands down, my impressions of over a thousand miles of why this BMW is the perfect car for British roads. Oh, have we found a good road? Look at that, the door shuts itself. I mean, this car is absolutely perfect. This is not gonna be a complete lust over this BMW product. I'm gonna do my best because, um, well, we're gonna start with the interior. I'll turn it on and sit properly so that we can get into where I feel like BMW have improved so much over the years, so much so that I actually think this interior quality has surpassed the Audi and especially the Mercedes interior. Now, I've not been in the new S class or the C class, but the previous Mercedes interiors, whilst they looked great, the actual infotainment and menu system was quite difficult to get used to, whereas this is incredibly intuitive. Obviously, I've had the M2 competition and the M3 and driven my fair share of BMWs, but there is something that BMW have nailed with, just the quality and the weight in when you're pulling this door handle, whether you're moving this air conditioning vent, they are all kind of above the product price point of this, which is 45,000 pounds. I know I've talked about how they're 55 grand on Auto Trader with a few thousand miles in. That's because the demand for these is so great. We're gonna start in sport mode. Mode? Sport plus mode. I'll turn into an Australian, mate. Sport plus. Manual. I did when I got this car was put it in eco pro mode now that may sound incredibly boring but considering the M2 competition was so fresh in my mind where I live we have got some of the harshest speed bumps which is crazy to think I actually bought a place that had speed bumps when I owned a Mercia Largo but the M2 competition was one of the most rigid stiff cars over those speed bumps it set the tone for the rest of the drive and I was already frustrated with the car that I was in before I'd got to the end of my driveway and my neighbor also had an M2 competition and it was something to do with just being sat so close to the rear wheels on the car that whenever the rear went over the bumps you smashed your head in the ceiling that is not an exaggeration so the first thing I wanted to do was put the suspension in its comfiest, most basic setting so that I could test whether this car had an improved and less compromised suspension system that was suited for a daily driver. And it ticked the box so good. By the way, I've come out here and I'm pooling around in Sport Plus mode. myself to purchase a car at any price that I don't like the looks of no matter how well it drives I actually prefer buying cars 
based on the way they look and the way they sound rather than the way they drive. Hence the Mercia Lago. The M240i is the complete flip. Every mile is gonna be worth it in this car. And then you get out of it, you know the phrase, you know you've bought the right car if you turn back round after you've parked it and look at it again. I would not turn back round and look at this car because it's ugly. But I wanted to because of how good it drives. So it's a really confusing car that kind of goes against, as a petrol head, what you're really looking for in a car. And ask yourself this, if you had 50 grand to spend, would you buy a slightly worse car than this? That drove worse, but looked better. Because that's the trouble that I'm having with it, this car, is I wouldn't buy it, because I don't like the looks of it. but it sounds good and it shifts. It incentivizes you to, to be quick and you're not feeling like you're risking lives to have a fun drive. And that is the best way that I can summarize this car. This car goes back tomorrow. I've got 24 hours with it and I've highly enjoyed every single drive that I've done in it. And I would go out and buy this car if I could then ship it straight to Motec and they could fiddle with the aesthetics. I didn't really want to mention and touch upon the tuning guys, but they have absolutely transformed the looks and the aesthetics of this car and got more sound out of it. And I do think that is the way that you want to go. The problem is, the moment you start lowering a car like this that's got a short wheelbase, the suspension becomes so stiff and you then start to lose that daily driver-esque. So it's a real catch-22. Do you go and make the car look better and kind of feel like when you get out of it or you're walking up to it, you're like, yeah, that's my car. Or do you keep it completely standard and have to hide it in a car park somewhere, but every time you get in it, it's like a, oh, your own personal uh, enjoyment center, where it's actually all about you and the driving experience that you have. So, it's a weird car. After driving this, it's 15 grand more expensive than my Golf GTI. And I think it's worth it. I think this is a very, very good car. Looks wise, five out of 10. Driving wise, on British roads, it's a 9.5. Genuinely, this is the perfect package to drive on our roads here in the United Kingdom. If you haven't driven one of these, and you're in the market for something between 45 and 55,000 pounds, you can go and buy a Golf R, a Mark 8 Golf R. I think it'd be mental to buy one of them over this. This is a highly, highly important and incredible sports car. Oh, we're still in a residential area. I thought we are in national speed limit. I was gonna absolutely boot it to finish the video. Well, we're stuck to 30 miles an hour. See what I mean? Anyway, manual, comfort mode. Everything just calms down. It's near on the perfect car. <laughs> Let me know what you think, guys. I will see you soon. Take care. Goodbye.